class attributes and modules lecture. So class attributes seem to be a bit useless, at least initially, and it's even falsely said to be bad code when creating variables in a class. So then why use them? Well, one reason is because they're actually more versatile than initialized variables, since it doesn't require the special init method. So how do we use them? Well, class attributes can be used either directly in a class or an instance. And we can use class attributes and imported modules directly inside of a class. So I'll show you with a practical example where we have a class called delivery. So class delivery, and then we have a class attribute called service charge equal to a float of 1.15. And then we'll have def is going to be init special method self colon and then we'll have a menu self dot menu equals a dictionary i'm going to have three dishes so one it's going to be a list of let's say coconut curry a string and then we'll just have its own value of 750 a float and then we'll do two it's going to be let's say spicy tofu with let's say 525 and lastly one more this will be veg noodles and it's going to be 875 so very expensive noodles and then self dot order equals an empty list okay so we're going to create a method here called choose in menu with self parameter colon and we'll have a for loop of for i in range one and then we'll have len self menu plus one colon then we'll do print i and then self dot menu i index by zero plus with a string of dollar sign plus string self dot menu i again for index then one this time and that should be good to go so the reason why I am putting the string here, str, is because, of course, we're getting the output of these float values, 750, 525, and 875, and we need to convert them into strings, and we're going to add them to the string of the dollar sign. Okay, so I'm going to create an instance of delivery. So d equals delivery on that, and we do d.tab. You can see I have the method to choose in menu. I've also got menu and order from the self. And then you have the class attribute here. All right, so let's just take a look at the outputs. So you can see I have the numbers associated with each of the dishes, the names of the dishes, and their own prices as well. All right, so let's just modify our choose in menu method. I'm just going to focus on that by scrolling down. And I'm going to add in that's the print statement of please enter the dish numbers you'd like. And then we'll have a while loop of while true colon self dot food equals inputs. And then we'll have try so we can catch any errors. It's going to be num equals absolute int eval self.food and I'll have accept in a moment so I'll just cover that in a moment but the try of course as I said is there to catch any errors now if I were to do say for instance eval that I get an error as you can see here a syntax error and I don't want that obviously so that's why I'm using the try and accept to catch any errors but let's say, for instance, using the input, of course, if I put in a number, let's say 10, I'm going to get an output of a string of 10 rather than the actual number of 10. So I need to use the eval built-in Python function to convert that string of 10 into a number. And I want to make sure that any inputs are going to be integers rather than floats. So I use the integer, the int, to convert the numbers into integers rather than being floats. And if they're negative values, then I can convert them into positive values with the absolutes. All right. And then we'll have, let's say, print, please enter a valid 
number and I'll do continue for continuing the while loop then we'll have some control flow of if self.food equal equal to essentially nothing or num equal equal to zero and num less than four because we've only got one two and three to choose from when it comes to these dishes here and then we'll have print thank you your order is complete and then we'll break out of the while loop with a break statement and then we'll have elif num is greater than or equal to four colon we'll do print please enter a number between one and three and then we'll have lastly else it's going to be using the self dot order variable we created dot append self dot menu and we're getting simply the prices for each of the dishes one okay and i'll just show you the outputs of the self dot order dot append so let's say i have print self dot order this is just temporary i'm going to remove this later on all right so i'll just save that and then i'll run this let's say i put in the errors first so i'll put in some gibberish so please enter a valid number so that's part of the accept clause here so the error has been caught let's say i put in 900 or 9000 rather please enter a number between one and three so that's for the lf statement here let's say i put in a float so 90.0001 please enter a number between one and three and uh, let's say i put in a string of hello please enter a valid number and let's say i enter just nothing please enter a valid number so that didn't cause any error and let's say lastly i put in some actual well before that i'm just going to exit out of it and restart so zero thank you your order is complete and i got an empty list here because of course i've not choosed any dishes so i'm just going to remove this eval and just run this again and now i'm going to put in some actual numbers for the dishes so one two and three then zero and you can see about the prices here of 750 525 and 875 here all right great so let's say i create one more method here now you can see obviously that with this output here of 750 525 and 875 in a list i can sum them up together to get the final output or rather a final price of how much the customer has to pay so we'll create a new method here just make sure it's not nested so it's going to be let's say simply pay self colon and total equals sum self dot order and then we'll multiply by the service charge and then we'll do print that will be a total of plus string and we'll have this total for now all right that should be good to go but it's actually going to cause me an error so run that on this i'll just do one two and three then zero so exit out of that okay and then we'll do d dot pay and you'll see a name error as you can see here it's going to say about the service charge so service charge is not defined so if you want to actually use the service charge which is a class attributes within the pay method what you need to do is simply do delivery dots see, delivery dots and then you can actually use the class attribute because remember you can call the service charge or any other class attribute directly inside of the class itself just as you can call it outside of the class so I have to do let's say with an instance d dots tab you can see i've got it here service charge I'll just come this out actually for the pay and i'll do service charge and i'll get 1.15 by floats 
And similarly, if I were to do just delivery dot tab, you can see I have it here as well. Okay, great. And I'm just going to rerun that. Now I'm going to run this. I'll do one, two, three, and then zero. All right. So we should get the summation of all of those values from this list here. Comment that out. In fact, I shall just remove all of that and do d dot pay. Well, this so you can see I've got that will be a total of twenty four dollars, and it's got too many decimal numbers here. So I'm going to use the round built in Python function here. So what you have to do is simply round, have that round the total, and two. That should be sufficient. Make sure I've got my parentheses correct here. Yep, that's fine. Okay, run that again. One, two, I just do those two. Then zero. Now run this, and I've got $14.66. Okay, great. Now, what about using a module inside of our class? Well, it's not quite as simple as it might initially seem. So I'll import it inside of the init. So import random as rd as usual. And then I'll do self dot rd equals rd. Now you can actually use this. I'm going to create another class attribute called, let's say prices. It's probably not the most appropriate title, but we'll keep it at that. Prices is just going to be 1, 0 0.85, 0 0.7 and let's say 0 0.5 all right and then I want to shuffle these values around and uh, you don't need the rd you do the self.rd so I have self.rd and then we'll have delivery dot prices and then I can do val equals delivery dot prices indexed by zero and then I can put it in here for each of them. I'm going to multiply by val. And also I'm going to use the rounds because I don't want some massive output of lots of decimal numbers. So rounds comma and then two and then the closing parentheses. All right, great. So essentially, if it's one, all the prices are going to be exactly the same. But if it's, let's say, 0 0.5, all the prices are going to be in half. So essentially, it's being discounted randomly by using the shuffle method. Excuse me, I've actually forgot something. Dot shuffle. There we go. So rd dot shuffle. So self dot rd dot shuffle shuffles the arrangements of these floats inside the prices list and then we index by zero just to get one of them and then we multiply that particular value whichever one it is whether it's one eighty five seven or seventy percent and fifty percent one of those four values and we multiply it by each of these three values for the prices of each of these dishes here in the menu all right so that should be sufficient. And we'll just run this again. And I'll run this as well. So you can see the prices have changed this time. So 375, 262, and 458. So I'll do one, two, and three. And then zero. Alright, and then I'll simply just sum up the values. So you can see it's 12.56. Okay, so this essentially concludes my lecture on how to use class attributes and modules inside of a class. I hope that's been insightful with this practical example. And perhaps you can modify this particular class by adding some more methods or class attributes. Okay, if you have any more questions, feel free to ask in the Q&A. And I hope to see you in the next lecture. Thanks.